Welcome to our lecture online and now let's explore the seven largest moons of the solar system. Now the solar system is probably well over 100 moons. Jupiter alone has more than 60 moons, but most of those are captured asteroids. So many of the other large gas planets have captured asteroids as well, on top of the moons that they probably formed when they, the planets first formed in the beginning of the solar system. And then, of course, Mars has two captured moons, and we're not going to talk about these here. But here are the seven largest moons. One of them, the moon, is our own moon, part of the Earth. We have four large moons belonging to Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Saturn has a, one large moon, has a number of medium-sized moons, but one really large moon. And then Triton also has a large moon. It's the smallest of the seven, but nevertheless, that is still a fairly large moon at 2,706 kilometers. It is not that much smaller than the moon of the Earth. So those are the, four, the seven large satellites, so to speak, of the solar system. Some unique things about it, Ganymede is the largest of them all with a diameter of 5,268 kilometers. That makes it larger than the planet Mercury. Then Saturn has a very large moon which is slightly smaller than Ganymede and Saturn has a unique feature that it has an atmosphere. And because it has an atmosphere, it can have liquid on the surface and it does indeed have liquid on the surface. But it's not liquid water because of the temperature is way out there at the distance of Saturn. Water cannot be liquid, it needs to be ice because of the, the cold, but it has liquid methane on the surface. It has methane rivers, methane lakes, and it has methane rain. So it's kind of a really interesting place. The, uh, the Europeans actually landed the satellite on the surface of, uh, of Titan and they were able to take pictures. And it was an amazing sight when they came down and actually saw those liquid bodies of uh, not water but methane. Another really interesting moon is Io. Io, which is the closest large moon of the four moons of Jupiter, is so close to Saturn that the enormous gravitational force causes the internal heating to cause the moon to have volcan volcanic activity. And so this is one of the moons, actually the only moon that we know of, that is volcanically active. And any time that we have flown by it with a satellite and take pictures of the moon, at least one of the volcanoes on the surface of Io was erupting. And you can see that the entire surface of Io is completely resurfaced with all kinds of interior material. And it has, it's a very colorful moon, very unique to the, to the landscape, so to speak, of moons. Now, Europa is also a very interesting moon in that the entire surface is, co is covered by ice, water ice. And that we believe that underneath that water ice, that thick layer of ice, is probably a liquid ocean of water underneath. And so we assume that that would be one place where life could actually exist beneath the protection of that thick ice layer. Again, we don't know if, I, if, if life exists there, but that would be one possibility. Ganymede is such a large moon that it no longer has volcanic activity, but you can see that it has surface features that indicate that there was volcanic and interior activity before. We have escarpments and, and features on that moon that shows that there was volcanic activity a long time in the past. So there's some very interesting objects out there. These are large moons. Notice that uh, our moon would be only larger compared to Europa and compared to Triton, that these four moons, Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Titan, are all larger than our own or moon. So density-wise, this is another interesting feature. Notice that the density of the Earth is slightly greater. Um, I should say the density of the moon is slightly greater than the density of rock, which would assume that there's a small amount of metal on the moon, probably at the interior, because of the average density is greater than that of rock. Same with Io, we could assume that there's probably some heavy elements in there, potentially also so a little bit of metal. Europa is pretty well close to the density of rock, so besides the crust that's made out of ice and the liquid ocean underneath it, there's probably a lot of rock below the surface then. Ganymede at a density of 1.94 grams per cubic centimeter is probably about half rock and half ice. So this is one of those ice moons that has a large percentage of ice within it. Same with Callisto and same with Titan. At those densities, you can assume that they're about half ice and half rock. And Triton is not far behind with a density of 2.05 grams per cubic centimeter. So that gives you a pretty good idea what these moons are like. We'll, of course, look at them in a, a lot more detail when we start talking about the moons themselves. But again, in the picture of our overall solar system, you can see there are seven large moons belonging, belonging to four of the planets in our solar system. And that's our solar system.